What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the psalms. Here we are on day 132 for the third time. Hallelujah. Psalm 132. Psalm 132 was an, another song of a sense. It's a song that was uh, sung by the Israelites on their journey to Jerusalem for the feast days. Hallelujah. But there are also prophecies. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sin, forgiveness of sins, anyone who hasn't received the free gift of salvation is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn our right standing with God. There's nothing we can do to earn eternal life. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human. He is God, not the Father, but the Son. He is God, was born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, he didn't deserve to die. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So through him, that death is taken, taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his righteousness, his, his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and you call out to him to forgive you, to save you, and tr you truly mean it, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, which changes your heart and leads you to follow Him. The Holy Spirit also gives you wisdom, discernment, and understanding in the Bible and in many things. If you truly mean it, if you truly mean it, if you truly believe that Jesus died for your sins, and you call on Him to forgive you, He will forgive you, He will give you the Holy Spirit, and He will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. Can't even imagine it. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent means to have a to have a change of heart, a change of mind, to truly turn to God, to truly give your life to Him. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on on the cross for your sins, and you call out to Him to forgive you. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give you life to Jesus. There's not much time left. Now we're getting into Psalm 132. Hallelujah. Again, it's another song of ascent. Every time I do a video. I've been sitting out here for a couple hours. Hardly any cars ride by. But as soon as, as soon as I do a video. It's like five cars ride by. Psalm 132. Remember, O Yahuwah. On David's behalf. All his affliction. David. King David. How he swore to Yahuwah. And vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. And this is David's vow. What well, David said to God. Surely I will not enter my house. Nor lie on my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes. Or slumber to my eyelids. Until I find a place for Yahuwah. A dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. And if you remember. David said this. He said I, I'm, I won't sleep. I'm not even. I won't even sleep. Until I find a house for God. A dwelling place for God. And here. Us as believers in Yeshua. We know 
that we're in a new covenant. Not completely in a new covenant yet, but we know we're in a new covenant. And here in this new covenant, God dwells within us. We are the temples. We are the house of God. We're all individual houses of God that form, that come together to form the complete house or temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. So, in the same way as David said, just, just as he said, I will not sleep until I find a house for my God. And we, we know that he uh, ended up not building that the temple. It was Solomon, his son. God didn't allow him to. Said he shed too much blood. But uh, in the same way, we need to be the we need to be the same way. We need to be the same way. Not deciding to not, not even sleep until we find a house for our God. Until we find a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. A new person for him to dwell in. And to be honest, I'm... God is speaking this through me, but... But maybe it's for me. More than it's for anybody else. We need, we need to be this serious about the gospel. Be this serious... About what is going on. About the truth of reality. We need to not even sleep. Before we bring another person to God. Before we bring another person to, to Jesus and his salvation. Before we bring the Holy Spirit. Until we find a, a temple for the Holy Spirit. The temple is our body. Let's follow God. Let's bring people to Him. It's very important that we bring people to Him. And like I said, I'm not the best at this. I'm I'm not uh I'm not good. I'm not even good at talking talking to people in person. I do I do all these videos, but I'm not good just just speaking to people in person. And, you know, I, I don't know how many people, if any, it could be zero, but it could be thousands. I don't know how many people I've led to God or I've affected through the things I do for the kingdom. But this is the attitude that we need to have to not even go to sleep. Until we find a house or a temple for our God. Until we find another person for God to dwell in through his Holy Spirit. Let's preach the gospel. Let's bring people to faith. It's very important. I mean, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters besides a relationship with God. But back here in Psalm 132, I will not give sleep to my eyes, nor slumber to my eyelids, until I find a place for Yahuwah. A dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. And then there's a pause in the scripture, and then we see that, and then we, then we read this. Behold, we have heard of it in Ephrathah. It said, Behold, we have heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the field of Jar. So, first off, Ephrathah. We read in Micah 5, verse 2. 
But as for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you will go forth for me to be ruler of Israel. Or one will go forth for me to be ruler, ruler of Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. He's speaking about Jesus. Ephrathah. So here in Psalm 132 it says, Behold, we have heard of it in Ephrathah. We have found it in the field of Jar. J-A-A-R. And the footnote for that, for Jar, is in the wood. Basically, we found it in the field of, of the wood. The field of the, we have found it in the forest. In other words... It's speaking about Jesus. It's, it's a prophecy about Jesus and how he was among the people. Behold, we have heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the field of Jar. Speaking about the world, among, among the people of the world, the field of Jar. Behold, we have heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the field of Jar. Let us go into his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Jesus said, or God says, and Jesus is God, but God says in the, I believe in the Psalms, the earth, or heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool. Let us go into his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Yahuwah, to your resting place. You and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness. And let your godly ones sing for joy. Hallelujah. For the sake of David, your servant. Do not t turn away the face of your, anoint of your anointed. Yahuwah has sworn to David. A truth from which he will not turn back. Of the fruit of your body, I will set upon your throne. And it's speaking about the son of David. And it's not speaking about Solomon. It's speaking about Yeshua. Not the direct son of David, but the, his descendant. Yahuwah has sworn to David a truth, a truth from which he will not turn back. Of the fruit of your body, I will set upon your throne. If your sons will keep my covenant and my testimony, which I will teach them, their sons also shall sit upon your throne forever. Hallelujah. For Yahuwah has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. Hallelujah. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her needy with bread. Her priests also I will clothe with, with salvation. Hallelujah. And her godly ones will sing aloud for joy. There I will cause the horn of David, and horn represents authority or power. There I will cause the horn of David to spring forth. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. And so his anointed will, there's different people who are his anointed. But a lot of the time I'm speaking about Jesus and he says, I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. If we go to Matthew 25, that lamp, that lamp is us. And either we're, either the lamp is empty of oil and we're caught up in the things of this world, we're living in sin or something, or we're focused on God and we have His Spirit filling us and flowing through us. We are the lamps. There I will cause the horn of David to spring forth. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. 
his enemies I will clothe with shame. But upon himself his crown shall shine. Hallelujah. His crown shall shine. And that's the end of Psalm 132. Let's be right with God, brothers and sisters. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's do his will in all things. Let's be prepared. Let's be ready. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I preach the gospel in the beginning. God just wants us to humble ourselves and to truly turn to him. Truly turn to God. Turn to Jesus. Truly give your life to him. Turn to him. And if you do, if you turn to him and you believe in his salvation, you believe he died for your sins and you ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Give your life to Jesus today. Turn to Jesus. There's not much time left. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.